everybody, it's Tamika, and I am here to share with you a school box project that I created for a second time, but this time I did the tutorial as requested. Um, I know a lot of you have been asking about it, and I finally got some time to be able to put it up, so um, I will link um, the video for the previous school box uh, mini album that I made, or desk mini album that I created. Super cute. I used the same paper and then I also put a card so you guys can be able to click and go directly there so you can see the original inspiration. Um, so this one I again used the Simple Stories Smarty Pants 12 by 12 paper pack and I do have um, a few scraps of sheets of paper left and I'm not sure if I did this in the tutorial but I'll do it. You'll see it two times. I also use this cork paper pad to use as my base because I know I didn't have the full paper pad and elements and stickers and things that I did with the first box so I was minimal this is a minimal mini album but I primarily did it um, to do a tutorial for you guys and I'm still able to use this book for this school year so let me go ahead and share with you the project and hopefully you guys will try it at home so here it is super super cute adorable and the inspiration for this, if you haven't seen the previous video, is um, those desks that we had when some of us were younger. And then they had the desk where you flip up the top. And then this was like a sliding window. And then that flipped up that way or slid open that way. But it was really cute. That was my inspiration from a back in the day picture that I saw. I thought it would be kind of cool to do a school desk with a mini album. A full school desk with a mini album. Feel free to add feet to the bottom of it, but let me just give you a quick um, overview of this box and then we can jump right into part one of the tutorial. There's two parts and the first part is strictly making the box and then the second part, part is making the mini albums that go inside the box. And then I don't decorate it on camera because it's really simple decorations and a lot of these I didn't have any elements so I fussy cut all these things out the paper so you and I both know me and fussy cut and it probably wouldn't have been a very fully decorated mini album anyway so um, this is what I did just got some cardstock here popped up these two elements on a pop dot this is a school desk um, chalkboard came from the Dollar Tree I'm trying to find the first the original one it was in a pack like or came from Michaels mini chalkboards um, really cute chalkboards. You can write on that with chalk, obviously, or you can put some other stuff on top of it. And then around the side, it's all covered with the cork, which I thought it was cool. I just cut out the paper. I love school to go around the border. That's a little um, detail from the pattern paper. And then I just slapped a map on the side. So, like I said, really simple embellishments, but like I said, the primary choice, I mean, the primary reason is for to do the tutorial. And then I like doing two in one, so now I'm going to use it for school stuff for the kids. So, inside this um, Fussy Cut School Days popped up an apple, popped all that up. Inside here, I just decorated the, to cover up the flanges. Everything else is covered in black um, chipboard. So, it doesn't need to be any pattern paper in there. And this is the mini album that I created. Um, it's 5x7 mini album, holds your full 4x6 photos, no trimming required. And I covered it too in the cork board, sticky back paper. And that's all I have, some uh, pop dots, some embellishments on here from the paper collection that I fussy cut out. And then all I did was layer the inside. So, you know, this is, uh, I think this is 4.5 or 4 and 3 quarters. So you could put a, paper, a photo mat here and then you're full 4 by 6 photo. It's a pocket so you are um, able to slide in a um, journaling spot. I mean, um, yeah, a photo mat. You can cut a photo mat to 4 and a half by 4 and a half by 6 and a half and then mat that and put your paper on there. So that's all I did was mat um, these papers. Like I said, I didn't have a whole lot of 12 by 12 left, but um, I will definitely be putting in some photo mats inside here. So that will give you, um, this book I made five pages, but you can do six. So you have uh, ten pages front and back. And then you also have inserts that you can put in. So you can put in another ten photos there. So that's twenty plus these two. So you put twenty-two photos just in this book alone if you wanted to. That just goes in there like so. And then the top flips up. 
and then we have a special storage box in the in here you can put um, extra photos you can put report cards little doodad memorabilia that you want to use that your kid brings back home so this is the photo box that I created really cute and um, the tutorial this gave this me some pro pro uh, problems but you'll see that in the tutorial we fix it but yeah that one gave me a little measurement issue so um, all I did was adhere some pattern paper on here inside and out and then on the inside here you have lots of space I think this is uh, two and a half or three inches wide um, so you're able to put and then it's an, um, seven inches width and deep you know you're able to put full four by six photos in here save them for later over it from your mini album report cards any of that stuff in here and you could use a magnet if you want or you can not it fits right in inside this box nice and neat okay so again I use the simple stories um, collection smarty pants it's an older collection but you know I'm not all about that it doesn't matter to me but um, let's go ahead and go to the tutorial if you guys like the video press the like button it is free for you to do so thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy okay we're gonna start out making the box for this project and my base is um, black medium weight chipboard and I get this chipboard from Amazon it's cut in a uh, 12 by 12 format I love their chipboard I'll try to put a link in the description box for you guys but it's some very sturdy chipboard and while making box projects like this I like to use um, a good uh, medium weight chipboard you will also need just like the bare essentials of a paper trimmer a score board a bone folder you need some double-sided tape and some scissors and then optional is a ruler or a straight edge something and I, if to actually do my box I use chipboard like cut so that can make sure that I cut a straight line all right I'm going to give you the measurements for the easy pieces and then I'm going to show you how I cut out the angled pieces for the sake of the video to make it a lot easier I did cut these out already I forgot to mention that you'll need some coordinating a couple sheets of coordinating cardstock for your flanges so here are the measurements for the flanges you will need and uh, the flanges are cut out of 120 pound weight cardstock that I got from Michaels and it's in black so that they can match together it just makes it easier when you match the flanges to the chipboard so that you can avoid covering up anything when you're laying your pad of paper it makes it easier in the end so you need four pieces of cardstock cut out at two by four you will need um, two pieces of cardstock cut out at two by nine and then you will need six pieces of cardstock cut out at two by eight so these are for your flanges and these are cut out of cardstock again that's 120 pound weight cardstock you need the chipboard cut out at three by eight one piece you need a piece cut out at uh, well you need two pieces cut out at three by eight That's the second one you need one cut out at four by eight one at six by eight one at four and a half by eight and then one at eight by nine all right so then after you get those cut out um, I am going to show you how to cut these angle pieces okay I have already cut out my pieces for this angle part um, because I wanted to make sure that it flowed accordingly and everything lined up before I started um, doing the video so I'm going to show you how to cut that in cardstock. I don't want to. I don't need any more angle pieces, but I'm going to show you how to do it in cardstock, and um, it's very easy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So you want to take your chipboard, okay, and you want to cut it down. It's 12 by 12 piece of paper, 12 by 12 piece of chipboard. Cut it down to nine. The first thing you want to do, okay. So now that you've got that cut to nine, now I am going to use my score board because I found that easier to deal with. All right, on the 12 inch side, you want to grab a pencil or um, you can use your bone folder to make indentations in the chipboard. I had to use a pen because the score tool 
just wasn't hard enough to go through to make the indents and I couldn't see it on the chipboard. So take your pencil, lightly mark, oh, lightly mark a three inch mark. So just score, score down or lightly mark with the pencil pen on your chipboard to three. And then you want to lightly mark it at four and a half. Okay. So now you can get your trimmer back out. And I'm going to cut that four and a half mark. Cut it off. Keep this piece. We're going to use it in a second. Okay. So take your, your piece of paper here. So you have the three mark here, three inch, and the four and a half inch mark that you've just cut to the edge. So this is where you want to use your ruler or straight edge. I used chipboard actually the first time. And you want to line this three inch tip to the end right here. So we just want to angle this just like that as best as you can get it. Line it up to the very tip. Take your pencil and make that diagonal mark. See? Can you see that diagonal mark right there? Bing! Alright, now get your trimmer back out or you can use scissors if you're better at freehanding. Um, if you take your scissors, if you're using your scissors, you just want to go from here to that mark. Follow along that diagonal. I found it easier to just line this up in the trimmer and you could have skipped this part about the line too if you have a good eye but just preparing you just in case those want to do it the normal way so put this in see this end down here because this is my line that I'm going to cut I'm just going to cut that diagonal right on off so that should be coming off and this is what you should have okay so it's eventually going to measure four and a half by nine. Of course, but it's at an angle. See? This is what it should look like. Just like that. So that other piece of chipboard that we cut off, when we cut it down, you want to line up the one that you just cut so that at least if you cut wrong, you have two wrong sides. And then you want to line up that edge and draw draw or cut freehand cut and do the exact same thing that you did before whether you're using scissors or a trimmer cut off that diagonal line so then you have two exact pieces of chipboard cut at an angle alright at this point we want to take all of our flanges that we've cut out and we want to score them in half so everything is at two by something so on the two inch side you just want to take your bone folder and score it at one inch you can fold them in half if you don't want to go through this process but if I were you so that everything is nice and pristine I would use the scoreboard and a score tool if you have it and cut all of these pieces down or not cut all the pieces down score all these pieces down the middle so I'm going to continue to do that and I'll be back when I'm done alright so all of my pieces have been scored now I'm just going to fold them all over and give them a good crease with my bone folder because this paper is very heavy it's a hundred and twenty pound weight so you want to make sure so it's going to be sturdy this project's going to be sturdy but it's you know it could be a little bit difficult to crease. So just get that bone folder in there and crease it really good so you don't have any problems later. Okay, and this last one. So now you want to take your scissors and then you want to angle all the corners. So, And that's just taking a little triangle off the end of the corner to create an angle. So you cut your little triangle, flip it, flip it over, and do the exact same thing. You want to have it, you know, like that. So go ahead, do that for all of these pieces, and I'll meet you back here in a minute. All right, all of my pieces have been scored and angled. So now I want to grab my double-sided tape and 
um, put some tape on the flanges. Just put double side tape next to each other. Whether you do it on the outside or the inside, you can easily flip it to the other side. All right, I'm going to do that and I'll be back. Okay, once you've gone through and added the double sided tape, I went over both um, sides with my bone folder to make sure they get a good, good crease. So you just want to go ahead and do that. Now, you'll have to, you can tell which ones are which. So take the, match up the sizes. So you should have two of the really, really tall ones, then a stack of the medium ones, and then a stack of the small ones because they are you know according to chipboard pieces so you want to grab we're going to start out with the base you want to grab the piece of uh, base that's eight by nine and then one of the angles that we just cut okay the angles should go with it going up upwards like this okay but before we lay that down we need to get a measurement of where um, to measure the other the middle piece and I'll explain that in a second so take your angle piece, angle piece, so the angle is going in this direction, and you want to score, I mean, uh, yeah, no, not score, draw a pencil line using your score tool at six. Okay, so you want to do that, and then you want to grab your other one and do the exact same thing. Same order, going left to right. And then score mark that the best way you can at six. Not score mark it. Mark it with a pencil. All right. Make sure that you can see it, basically. Use a pen, whatever. You're going to cover it with pattern paper anyway. Um, unless you choose to leave the inside black. Okay. So got your bottom piece of eight by nine. Okay. You need one of the angle pieces. We're just going to do this one at a time. And the angle, the... Be, in my, be mindful that where you marked it at, that's on the inside. Okay, because that's you'll need that as a guide. So we're going to line this up just like so. That's going to go just like that. So you want to take one of the larger flanges and take one piece off of the double-sided tape, one side off. Take your bottom piece down here and center that onto the flange without going past the score mark. Give it a good crease. Okay, like so. And then take the other half off and do the same thing with the angle piece. So line up the bottom, don't go past the score mark, just like so. Try to keep it as lined up as possible. It's going to be a little gap in there, that's just enough to uh, for that to fold up for the thickness of your chipboard. So that's going to be like that. See? Just like so. So get your other angle piece. All right. And of course, I've marked that on the wrong side. Forgot you had to flip it over. So you want to score it at six. But since the angle piece is going this way, okay, angle piece is going this way for the opposite side, we're going to still score it at six, but just making sure we get it like that. There we go. Easy peasy. All right, now that should be, those lines should be lined up. Yes, they are. So that piece is going to go there. Do the exact same thing with the larger flange. I think it's the two by nine. Okay. Get your base piece lined up on there. As close to the score line as possible. Center it as best as possible. So I'll flip that over. Get that a good, make sure that's down really good. Take the other side off. 
being careful that you see that the lines on the inside you can see them and line this up with making sure you line it up with this so if you messed up on this side make sure that matches that or else we're in trouble but just follow the line the best way you can okay pull that over so now you should, you can just give that a little, just a little easy little tug so that you can help conform that paper a little bit. Okay, so that's, this is what you should have. Okay, so now we're going to take the, um, the piece that's cut at 4 by 8, the chipboard piece is cut at 4 by 8, okay, and then this is going to go line up with those two lines like that. So we're going to add the flanges and these use the smaller flanges. Okay? So the paper, the chipboard is going to be lined like this and the flanges are going to go in here 1 2 3 4. Okay? So this is on the inside. So since I have it like this, all I have to do is flip it to the opposite side. No big deal. Take one piece all right, and we're going to put that directly on the piece that's the middle partition. So line that up with the edge, making sure that the sticky part is touching, you know, the chipboard. Okay, and we're going to get another piece and do the same thing. I think it will be easier if we do two at a time. Sticky part, and we're going to line that up just like so see flip it over and do the same thing so we're going to use all four of the small pieces right here being being careful to make sure that you're paying attention to the way that I'm lining up the the pieces. You don't want it to be backwards. And then one more. And I'm just removing one side of the tape on the flange. I think it'll be easier. Okay. Alright. Let's bring this back in. Now there's two spaces because the littlest space is facing that way. The bigger spaces is down here. And so this should sit perfectly in between the two. So we're going to try to do this. You can try to do it one at a time. Let's just see how it works if we do it twice, two at a time. So line that up. Remember, your center line of your chipboard is going on the center line of that that you made. I think it would be easier if we set it like this. Keep it open. line it up and press it down. That wasn't bad at all. Now let's see what the other side brings us. One and two, releasing the double sided tape. And we're going to close that down. This one we can actually just bring up, making being careful to line that up center lay that down not too shabby and then just give it a good crease while it's down there just like that so that's the most important part now this is wave wavy we you can leave that if you want but we're not going to do that because we made flanges we made flanges for that okay so you're going to get two of the stack that's left this is not too many options left over there and take off one of the backings okay and this is going to so this is the way the box is going we're going to sit this just like that so that the bottom half will be attached to the bottom of here so whatever angle you can get that at do it make sure it's lined up with that line and 
and then I'm going to release the bottom. I hope this is making sense and I'm not making it difficult for you guys. Bone folder for that. And then we're going to do the same thing for this side. I'm going to release two this time. I think it was a little easier. Okay. Stick that right in that corner. Put it down. And press it against the back of that piece. Use my bone folder. There we go. Now that's nice and sturdy. Okay? So, as I'm thinking, I see that I I did not cut enough flanges, but we'll get to that. We'll finish what we have and then we'll cut some more flanges out. Okay, so you should have four flanges left. Now we're going to do the back piece, which is the four and a half by eight, and that should fit just like that on there, like so. So, get your flange out, and I think all the ones that's left are the same size, so. And then, like I said, that's going to line up just like that, and then we'll need to cut some more flanges, but we'll do that in a second. So line up the bottom, okay. There we go. Get that on there really good. One side on the back and then take off the other piece. Line it up with the bottom, making sure you line up all of the edges correctly. Not to go past the score mark. a good crease and that should line up perfectly with the top so this these are the flat the corner flanges I forgot so we're gonna leave that there for a second and then we're gonna do the front piece which is the three by eight piece we're gonna do the same thing take off one of the pieces one of the backs to the double sided tape line it up with the chipboard not to go past the score mark and do the same thing so now we're going to the front of the box which is here layer that right on top give it a good crease so that should fold like that. So you should be having something that looks like this so far. All right. Now we have two flanges left and those are for the top pieces, but we're gonna wait to do that because I don't want it to interfere with what's going on over here. So let's get these flanges done. So we'll have to go backwards, Tamika, and get your black or get your card stuck out and let's cut some flanges okay so that took all of one minute well maybe a couple minutes but super easy you need two pieces and I've already scored them and put the tape on the side and cut them at the angle so you need to do the exact same thing that we did with the previous flanges that we did at the beginning so you need two pieces cut at um, two by three and then two pieces cut at two by four and a half and score them in half at the one inch mark. Add tape to the backs or tape to facing sides and then cut them at an angle. So once you do that, we can go ahead and finish putting this box together. So the two that are cut at two by three are in the front. So I'm gonna take the flanges off and then you can see here 
they're going to go down, flange is going down, so it's hard to it's hard to do that with this angle, but I'm going to close that up and I'm just going to pinch it together and apply it to one side, the flange, you can see that, and then close up the front side and fold it down to match. Like so. All right. Now let's do the other side. So take these sides facing together. As far as how you're going to lay it, but give it a good pinch to fold it back to get it out of the way. Put one side down. Make sure that everything is lined up before you lay the other side down and give it a good crease. You can also fold it on its side and you know just make sure that it, it's adhered very well. Alright, the other two pieces cut at two by four and a half. We'll close this fellow up here and do the same thing. Pinch the sides and then close it together. Make sure everything is lined up. Okay. Last one. Pinch the sides. Make sure everything is lined up. it together. So go over all of your pieces with your bone folder. Make sure everything is tight, neat. Okay? And this is what you should have so far. Okay, and now we want to put our flaps on so get those flanges that we had left over from earlier we're going to start with the back flap back flap which is the one that was cut at three by eight and that's going to go right there so what you want to do is take one of the flanges remove the backing and add it to the chipboard nice and center Okay, now we're going to release this piece, and then this is going to go on the inside of the back one. So, this is the double sided tape on the other side. Face that on the inside of that division and squeeze it nice. And then this should be careful, fold up like that. And then you add paper, it'll be heavyweight and stuff like that. So, that's that. Now take the other piece that should be 6 by 8 and then you have your last flange, okay, um, so on the 8 inch side, line it up, score it, remove this piece here. And then this should fit on the inside of the other piece. So stick it in there. You can't stick it in there because it's not long enough. But butt that up against that middle piece. Reach your hand in there to give it some stability. And give it a good press. Oh, let me get off of this. Shaking it. Be careful. And then there. There you should have it. Now I've already. Alright. So this is what you should have so far. That flips up that way. And then this flips up that way. Okay? 
So the next thing we want to do is make sure, like I said, make sure that all of your pieces are on there really nice and tight. Go back over it. I've already bent this too much with my hands leaning on it. But um, go over it with your bone folder as such. And we are going to start to complete the inside parts of the box. I save um, the layering and decoration for later after I get all the base parts done. So I can make sure I have enough paper when I pull it and that kind of stuff. So um, once you get done with this box, um, put it to the side and we'll go ahead and get started on the books that go inside. So I'm sure this would just be part one. So stay tuned for parts um, continuing parts because I don't know how many parts will be left but this is part one if you want to go ahead and measure out all of this and um, layer your paper paper feel free I just have one 12 by 12 paper pad I want to make sure I have enough for the end parts so don't forget to vote for me for um, to compete at chopped at home you guys I'm gonna say this until August the 22nd so this was going to happen and this is the dish that I made it's a really good dish we had to use um pork tenderloin cherry tomatoes broccoli and sargento four state cheese and this is the dish that I made it's a creamy broccoli soup with some mixed in with some um um the the bacon bits along with some of the pork I sauteed added it to the top of the cheddar broccoli soup and then I made some pork loin crostinis um, to go alongside so hopefully you guys will vote you can vote up to five times a day on different devices and then all you have to do is refresh the whole thing takes like less than 30 seconds refresh vote refresh vote so hopefully you guys will do that but um, if you don't um, that's fine but like the video if you like it it's free to do that leave a comment let me know what you think thank you guys so much for watching I will see you at part two